My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, big fan of the X-Men animated series from, from the 90s. We looked at the, uh, the Batman animated book uh, about the, you know, the Bruce Timm series. This is a book about the making of the 1990s X-Men animated cartoon. It's a good pairing, those two. I feel like those were the big comics uh, media properties around that time. Yeah, we're going to delve deep into this, but first, what do you have, Jimmy? I have patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. Uh, showing off right now the process zine that I made for the Street Angel Gang. So it includes a uh, copy of my pencil roughs, which you're flipping through right now. Um, I also have a script, which I would draw on my script. So these are reproductions of the actual making, you know, the, the materials I use to make this book. And uh, they're available as June downloads on my Patreon, uh, along with a lot of other similar kind of uh, pieces on there, a lot of original art that shows how I make the comics that I make, specifically Street Angel. And you can get all that at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Doesn't look far different than the Grim Reaper from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. <laughs> Maybe it's planted in my subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Red Room comics are out in the wild. If you see an issue, grab an issue. If you see an issue one with this cover, you want to scoop it up fast, man, because we have pretty much sold out of these comics, and we have to launch into reprints of Red Room issue number one. Got to thank you, the Kayfabe audience. Got to thank you, Jimmy Rugg, for the cool, sexy variants that uh, helped goose the, those numbers up. Um, it's a monthly comic, and every issue is completely self-contained. So if you are one of the uh, slow goers who missed issue one, Grab issue two because it's it's its own thing. Uh, you can pre-order these comics at the Fantagraphics website or get them put them on your pull list at uh, your your favorite comic shop. Or if you want to read the comics ahead of time, hit up my Patreon, patreoncom Piscor. Three bucks get you the archive. There, I have four issues online right now, and I put new strips up every Tuesday. Let's let's launch into things, Jimmy. Man, the X Men animated series, very near and dear to my heart. Love this cartoon growing up, man. 11 a.m. on Fox every Saturday. I was there religiously, even when they fucking replayed the same episode over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, when you look at this book and you see these images, you know, in stone, still, uh, you could quickly tell that it's kind of the story, like the Claremont contribution to the X-Men is what makes uh, X-Men the, like the cool thing because some of this stuff, pretty fucking rough, man. I love seeing it this way, though. I'm already excited by this book. This is the first time I've seen this book. And uh, Abrams, the publisher, uh, I think of them with art books as being just very top-notch reproduction and everything. So it's awesome to see all of this. And I like the rough parts. You know, like I like seeing the, uh, the animation cells and background pulled back so you see the edges and you kind of see those uh, seams, if you will. There's rough and there's rough. And I'm talking about, uh, like, uh, perhaps not thorough underdrawing underneath uh, some of the figure work and things like this. One of the early uh, cartoons that would use a black line for background. That is what I remembered about this comic. And for Shadows. Yes. Which was really, I don't know, another com uh, cartoon that would do that. Um, really stood out and kind of gave it a look that made it look like something, like a comic. Yes. It's kind of a cool problem solve for how much can we make this sort of resemble the comics. So all you need... We're, which we're at the top of the world, right? I mean, look what you're showing off right there. Like, the hottest property in comic books. You want to reference the comics as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, the cartoon doesn't happen if you don't sell 8.6 million copies of uh, X-Men issue number one, man. And the diminishing returns are still in the millions. Yeah, it's, it's time to, to capitalize off of that for sure. Here I love this. Model sheets, head, head roughs. It's so cool, man. And these complicated ass. You have to think all this stuff through, man. You can't be willy nilly on a comic page. It could look a little curb, like a little different every every panel. And also, you might only have to draw that four times in an issue. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to fourteen hundred for for a couple minutes of animation. It's fun seeing that they try to use a little brush, man. You know that you can't you can't keep that going. Whenever I think of the X Men and with their voices and stuff, I don't think of Halle Berry or Hugh Jackman. I think of the voice actors from this cartoon. Yeah, they always felt super weird to me, the the voice actors. Just because, like, it's in your head, you right. know, reading the comic books, and it's always going to be different whenever you put a, an actual voice on top of it. Absolutely grew on me, though. 
One of the these remind me, Ed, of your early X Men drawing. Right. The the pre -gra uh, grand design drawings that you posted. Uh, really feel kind of like this. This was uh, at a time when back issues were so prohibitively expensive and there really were like a very few rare kind of reprints here and there, big big arcs and stuff would be shared. So like the first time I saw this angel costume might might have been on the uh, cartoon or something and uh, they would have these Easter egg characters and crap that, you know, the first time I dealt with Al Alpha Flight was probably on the cartoon. You know, that was a direct market comic book. You weren't getting that at the uh, Shop and Save. I don't think people were even getting it at the, at the comic shop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love these storyboards. Yeah, man. It's uh, This is like the first go-round for the in introduction sequence before they sort of pared everything down. Oh, man, it's cool to see. Yeah. But you can also see that, like, production-wise, like, this is not the Bruce Tim designy kind of cow arts people. This is This is some other shit. It's the right way to go. If it's too similar to, say, the Bruce Tim stuff, then you're going to be pale in comparison. Sure. You, know, like you, need to, you need to really do your own thing. And there's such a difference between Marvel and DC Comics and storytelling. Like, some of the stuff you want just doesn't fit in the Bruce Tim. You know, if you're coming from X-Men, yes. some of the stuff that you want doesn't fit in that style. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not talking about, like, copying the Bruce Timms. I'm talking about the, the artistry behind the creation. Like, this is much rougher, looser kind of kind of artwork and I guess I just never really paid that much attention to it when you see it in, in motion but seeing everything still compared to the construction of the figures and stuff in that in that Batman book it there's no comparison right you know like you know how, how sort of like undynamic that is in a way we look at a lot of uh, like artist editions and stuff and whenever you start to see these kind of cell animations and especially when it's like a bust and, and they're just cut off and you see someone like the background behind them. It's so jarring to me because it's not something I look at that often. You know, I, I look at a little bit, but it's very different than what we see in comic book art originals. Then you know, you like this kind of stuff where he's just, he just ends, his <laughs> legs just end. Then you start thinking about um, how in animation there are like the guys who like are masters of smoke and energy and like how... Look at yeah, that's color. what I'm talking about. It's such a bizarre juxtaposition. I kind of love it, but it's very, very unnatural if you're not coming from that world feral was animated man the geeks she looks good there. the geeks have won yeah they have wow look at that you got to hit it with a dry brush get a little paint on the cell wow i can't believe that they would like that would be tough to animate because you would just have to keep flex. making it yeah. yeah you would just have to keep making more flex and i guess just the more you do it it looks like it's doing something that apocalypse looks good. Yeah, it does. Very weird. Like, this, those colors look so strange. Once you translate into other media, too, it starts to... I don't know. You really get a, get a chance to see the design of the characters. That's a pretty good-looking gambit. A little cycle. Whenever the, you get a glimpse in of, like, Disney Studios or something, when they would talk with the animators whenever a new big feature film is coming out, and you see their setups, man, with, like, mood boards around their desks and all kinds of stuff pasted up, super sexy to me, man. That was one of the things I loved about the uh, the Rob Liefeld uh, commercial, Levi's commercial, man, where it's just, like, you see piles of artwork. I remember thinking, like, I would like to draw as many pages as that pile right there. Damn, and then you got a lip sync dude who does something who does shit himself or something? <laughs> That's really funny with no head. <laughs> <laughs> this is like whenever you learn how a magic trick works. Right. Yeah, reuse that Wolverine body. Like the old animation where it would be the uh the mouth. The, uh, what, what was that? Clutch cargo. Clutch cargo. <laughs> <laughs> just a hole there. <laughs> so bizarre. I was just watching Jackie Brown and there was a clutch cargo on the TV. These storyboards look pretty good. It's like comics. They're very detailed. Yeah. The storyboards have such a wide range. Man, and then all these set, like the set designs. No That's a different it, artist. Man. Yes, no faking it, man. Like, all real perspective. It's like a blueprint guy or an architect did this shit. I remember Dave Cooper's comics journal interview. He had, like, Futurama backgrounds that he designed, and it's the same kind of deal. 
Dave Cooper artwork, but uh, that same kind of like sets all designed. <laughs> That's really funny looking. <laughs> A little bit stiff Wolverine. That's a great scent. That, that, that's an awesome, like, the sentry with its head ripped off. Oh man, when Worf comes back as a tool of Mr. Sinister, I don't think Super Adaptoid made it into the cartoon. I don't seem to remember that. Mr. Sinister's a hard character to try to make any sense of, man. If you read, go read his Wikipedia and come back to this video. They tried, man. The Roman Reigns of '90s X-Men comics, man. Omega Red. You could not describe him better. <laughs> he's in. He's in all the. He's in the video games. You know, he's on the cartoon. He's got action figures. But when was he last used? You know. Yeah, and the even more forgotten one is Maverick. Like those yeah. characters just didn't come out of. Uh, they didn't. They didn't last past the '90s. Oh man, this is like the Creole. Gambit homies. There's something that happens, and I, I bet this book Freedom Force funny. was so big in the early 90s. And it, it felt like it, it, they would guest star in every book that I read. They would last, they lasted way longer than you think, too. They were introduced in like the Alan Davis era, and they kept going probably until Jim Lee. They would be in Hulk, they would be in Rob Liefeld comics. I, I swear, like whatever I read, they would show up sooner or later. Yeah. And also a real dumb conceit, too. It's like, we did all this bad stuff, but we'll work for the government now. <laughs> and yeah, it'll all be okay. Fisted. I always like Spiral. All the multiple arm characters, I think. I, it's, it's, a, it's a visual that I respond to. I do wonder if Punisher showed up like in one clip, clip, because that would happen a lot. There would be like news broadcasts, and it would be flashing on TV. And Ghost Rider would just ride by and shit. I'm so surprised by that. I always think of that stuff as being like legally, tr they try to keep stuff separate. Right. Uh, kind of cool though. That's a fun. That's a fun thing to get in a cartoon. That's one of those Kirby, uh, super. De n uh, no, uh, shit. I forget that guy's name. That's Kirby right in the middle. Yeah, it is. That might be Len Wein with the ears. What What is that art even for? Just, just production group stuff, shot? I guess. Yeah. Background crap. Mojo World. Ah. Mojo. Dude, doesn't that feel like Brendan McCarthy? Like like uh, that Mad Freeway. Hatter face or something? Yeah, totally. That Mojo looks really good. It's funny what characters translate to to this uh, to to cartoons. And imagine, I mean, these these uh, how do you simplify Art Adams' designs, man? Exactly. Look, Lobo. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, Sinister does not look fun to animate. Uh uh That cape is. Is nobody's friend. <laughs> wow, and then and then when you have to animate a crowd of, of people, do this like uh, twenty frames a second. Fuck that. It's neat how sometimes the figures look like different art styles, like like an Art Adams kind of figure. Yeah. There was an oral history book uh, of of uh, the creation of this series that's out there that was kickstarted and that's what I thought this was when we were talking about the, it. You see the same names on the front, so I guess you know that was that was their thing, that makes and, sense. The, and then they that makes total sense. Abrams would see it and be like, "That we we could do something with this." The Jim Lee design for Gambit's basketball outfit. <laughs> we talked about that in the X Men one uh, episode. That's hilarious. <laughs> You were looking at something? I was, yeah. Look at the weird effect here of these like streaks on these characters. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Some kind of time paradox thing? Something yeah, about something. to happen? That's the other thing I always like when I look at animation art is seeing like how they achieve visual, various visual effects. Rarely it's what I would think. Same thing with that magician reveal. Here's, here's a That's good a example. Good Phoenix, man. Wow, airbrush it looks like. Yeah. I can't believe the number of character designs too. Tons, man. They would they would they would ply you with stuff. That's neat. This reminds me of like the Mobius, all the spaceships from the Dune documentary. It does, man. Look at that sun. That's a hot sun. <laughs> with that green against it. This is a great book for uh if you're a fan of this series or if you're a fan of this kind of design stuff. It's really loaded with things. I can't believe the number of characters. The Ken. And I swear they they make it sound like he, they're calling him dickhead. <laughs> Look at how goofy 
These guys are. <laughs> Holy fuck. That looks like fan art. It's not the X-Men, it's their stunt doubles. Remember that part in Space Force? <laughs> <laughs> also, they don't line up. Like, Carol Danvers looks totally different than Beast. Like, like different stylistically different. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know who that is. Oh, that's Quark from uh, the Longshot miniseries. Wow. Another uh, Art Adams looks character. Like an Adult Swim extra. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking strong guy, dude. That strong guy makes me sad. Yeah, sure. You guys could do better on strong guy. The running strong guy is a little bit better, but it's still kind of weird proportions. Very weird. <laughs> you know, you got to shrink those legs up so much. It is, yeah. Like, the body's just too big for the head size. I rewatch this series every now and then. Let it play in the background while I'm working, inking and stuff. Sort of reminds me of, of, like, the early inspirations of what got me in the game, you know? Like, I desperately wanted to draw comics and shit while I was watching this. It, the, the cartoon inspired me more than the comic, in a way, man. The stories were much more cogent, snappy, fulfilling, one and done. It was everything that the comic wasn't, really. And it was another opportunity to try to... to try to polish some of that weirdness. How conscious are you of the cartoon influence in Grand Design? Because, you know, like, it's, it's I mean, in there. They, they build on original stories, but then they sort of make them work in that cartoon format. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's totally in there. And, and it was one of the graces that I allowed myself with, like, using this character instead of that character in certain spots, man, because it's how it worked on the cartoon. I think the movies have done that. The couple that I've seen, mm -hmm. it feels like, you know, they get this whole big catalog to go through, but then it's the freedom to, you know, make some choices, edit some stuff, yeah, make it fit that two-hour format. Just let it be its own thing and not worry about the people who are like, this is not like that. And it's like, well, it's because you have that. Go read that. Yeah, it's neat to see, like, the iconic moments. Wow. Howard the Duck on the shirt. See, there would be so much of this. Madrox the Multiple Man. You know, like a Spider-Man hand, that surprises me. That, that Again, if you were keeping it all separate, you I, know that... I, I don't remember that that piece, actually. I don't, I don't remember Hulk showing up, either. <laughs> I thought it was Thor for a minute, but no, it's Omega. <laughs> Omega Red. <laughs> Hold up. It's freaking random. Random violence. <laughs> He's in there. Joe Quesada, represent. And then that last season looks so weird it's like they changed the model of the characters a whole bunch they they must address it in this book but i think it was even on a different channel hmm uh, same voice actors and everything but it looked softer it looked that's hmm. weird i wonder if they switched studios or something they, for the something happened production and i just saw avengers stuff like that last season i know so little like this is from that last season Yeah, there were some Avengers, right? Yeah. Well, these are the mutants, man. Right. But Magneto's kids. House of M. <laughs> Did Wolverine ever use the claws for, <laughs> like, he's got it under the dude's Stab belt? Stab somebody. Come on. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, the reams of storyboards, man? Yeah, that the storage for something like this because so much of this is physical would have to be like a warehouse. You got to you got to um deliver destroyed. <clears throat> you deliver phone books of storyboards to these guys desks and stuff. Yeah, that was that step in the Alex Toth animation thing like once the storyboards are approved just make a bazillion copies cuz they go to everybody. Freaking Phalanx, Cameron Hodge. The phalanx would be ridiculous to animate. Yeah, the poor people responsible for that. That was that uh, George Perez annual. Great, great episode. Great episode, man. <laughs> World War II joint. It's a pretty funny costume. <laughs> it's that. Uh, it, it's that last season too. That's like, it's just animated for shit. The mask. Totally the mask. Mesmero. Get the fuck out of here. I don't even remember Mesmero. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a Steranko issues. Mm. 
and then all the tchotchkes, man, that came like from Chef Bouillardie and Pizza Hut and all that this stuff. This is the real good licensing deals here. This is your mailbox money for Marvel. Just sign off on that stuff and go make some sugary cereal. Yeah, man. Near and dear to my heart, you know. Had all this stuff. Yeah, right place, right time for those toys to relaunch. So this is like, previously on X-Men was the book that they had floating around the convention scene. I seen those guys at WonderCon and stuff. Shepherding the book around. It's neat to me that something like this can exist through that model. Like we crowdfund, make our own version, catch the eye of a bigger publisher. It's it's been my get, model get my whole budget. life pretty much, man. Like like present the stuff elsewhere, create some artillery to give a publisher a reason to fuck with it, and then do the Hollywood version. That's a nice book. Yeah, super fun, man. A lot of good art in it. Good companion piece to the Batman animated uh, hardcover from the animated series, man. Uh, the two big comic book properties that were animated in the '90s that definitely primed the pump for the post-2000 movie era. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And a big inspiration to me growing up uh, as I want, you know, wanted to solidify my my future profession, growing up to be a cartoonist, man. So super happy to take a look behind the scenes, man. I can't wait to read it, man. The publisher just sent this to me uh, a couple of days ago, man. So It's exciting to put a fresh book under, you know, like because right. I got a couple in the mail last week that I plan to show off next week, and it's like there's a juice in the beginning of like, oh, man. Yeah. This new thing I want to pour through. Yeah, that's that's a nice book. I love all that production art. It's so cool to see that stuff gathered up. Absolutely, man. Like, like you think about, like, there's just so much of that stuff, that, and just nobody sees it except the people in-house. Yeah, so much of it's gone, too, you know? You think of the volume that's created, it's, like, probably a lot of this stuff. It's just, most of it's been destroyed. I have questions, too, about how, like, how do you even present a portfolio for, like, your next job if the, the work is invisible, you know what I mean? Like, you must be allowed to keep certain things so that you could show it off or something, right? I have no idea. It's a different a universe than comics. Who, who you know, I guess, and I don't know. I, the The word on the street, man, has always been, and, like, you know, take heed as well in case this ever happens, man. But if you ever, like, were to move to L.A., the places you'd be hanging out would be Burbank, man, because that's where all the animators are chilling, you know? And uh, they're coming from the Midwest as well, like... Like, that's where you find your real heads. Anyhow, K favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what is out there? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my hard-to-find out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art for Street Angel, Aphrodisiac, Octobriana. Lots of process stuff and how I make the comics I make. Patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Comics are out there in the wild, going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Issue 2 is... Off to the presses as we speak. Issue one's going to have to be reprinted. So if you see that first issue, scoop it up ASAP, man, so that you could have your hands on that OG copy, man. Uh, going to be a monthly comic. Every issue standalone. Get it pre-ordered uh, through the Fantagraphics website or get it put on your pull list from your favorite comic shop. Uh, you could read the comics ahead of time at my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks get you the archive there. I have four issues that are live as we speak. Um, like I said, three bucks gets the archive. New strips every Tuesday. All those links can uh, be processed by way of my link tree in the description below this video. What else, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on and coming out in 2021. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them one less set of marching orders, man, and we'll be on our way. Make more comics.